what's up guys? Today we're gonna to talk about the LS3 conversion on the ADR build for the Brownells crew. I'm here in Logan, Utah at Novak Jeep Conversions with my buddy Tim. Let's do this. Tim, what do we got here, first of all? We got the LS3 in its uh, 495 horse variant. Uh, they offer it in 430, 495, and 525 horse versions. We decided that based on uh, the weight and the, the type of driving that this vehicle is going to do, that the 495 horse version would probably be best suited and uh, most drivable. Right. Gobs of power. Tons of power, tons of usable power. But the, the nice thing that we like about this, this LS uh, power plant is that when you just want to drive it mellow, you can be as mellow as you want. If you just want to go to the grocery store like your grandma and grandpa car, you'll do it. Um, it's when you put your foot into it that it really wakes up. And we've coupled it with the 6L80 transmission. Uh, we really like the four to one first gear that it has and two overdrives. So it makes it very easy to, to uh, drive on the highway, very manageable. Um, get respectable mileage if you can keep your foot out of it. And then also with the low first gear, when you're off-road, it really comes in handy. Let's talk about the two overdrives. Educate me a little bit on that. Where, where do you find those in the gear pattern? Um, that'll be fifth and sixth gear. Mm -hmm. And with the setup that we're using with tap shifting and all, you're, you're able to lock that out actually, if you so desire. You can lock it in whichever gear you want. Uh, if you're off-road and four-wheeling in first gear, you can lock it in first gear. Mm -hmm. um, but when you put it in drive and get out on the highway, uh, the computer, it, and it's really an adaptive setup that they've got, the GM has on these, very adaptive. You'll notice if you drive aggressively for a while, the shifts will be aggressive. But if you drive very mild-mannered, it'll start becoming, it'll, it'll adapt to that type of driving style. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. But with two overdrives, um, it just doesn't, it's effortless on the highway. It doesn't work. You know, we're not going to be hunting for gears like no. we did with the uh, 320 nope. powertrain. No, <laughs> those days are gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love, I love the kind of thought process that went into to setting this Jeep up with what we are going to run. Uh, what do we couple transfer case with and why? Um, we used the 241J, they call it, that came in this, the non-Rubicon version. Um, we did a complete rebuild on it. We put uh, what we call a six pinion planet in it to give it a little bit of a strength upgrade. And then it did a full rebuild on it. And then we're also putting uh, Tom Woods output yokes on it, mm -hmm. upgrading them to match the Terraflex axles at 1350U joints. So it's a complete strength upgrade for the transfer case and the full drivetrain at that Titan, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So one of the last Jeep pieces that we're actually running in this thing, isn't it? Yeah, it, it actually is the only thing Jeep about it, the drivetrain. <laughs> That's exciting. You know, uh, you mentioned the Tom Woods uh, aspect of the build. I'm excited to get them under there. It's gonna be nice. Uh, coupled with the Terra 60s that we put in it, yep. I think it should be pretty stout. Both high pinion yeah. front and rear. Yeah. Tom Woods are putting together a couple of really good drive shafts for us mm -hmm. as well. They always do great work. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I've been asked a couple of times of why didn't go with the Atlas or any other powerhouse type transfer case. And really this is a good time to address that. This is a really, thought out build and it's not a dedicated crawler. It's not gonna be trailer to the trails and, and really ripped on all the time. So when it came time to shop and piece together what we're gonna run on this, uh, it really did make sense to run this configuration, have the power when you need it, uh, the performance is there. And like you said, it sounds like it's gonna be really well mannered when, it, when it's just on a cruising type thing. Yeah, and the other reason you don't need to go with such a, uh, a low gear transfer case and anything that heavy duty is because like you said it's not going to be doing hardcore trail duty rock crawling um, and it doesn't have that much power you know 600 horse 700 horse pushing it with the strength upgrades we did to the 241j um, and that four to one first gear you don't need anything lower than what that 241j offers so uh obviously this is a gm performance setup we uh purchased the engine and transmission from gm but in-house we did the uh, transfer case rebuild. Yep. Yeah, and it's pretty incredible. The world-class transmission transfer case shop they have on site here, it really does help me sleep at night knowing that the stuff was built here. We had control, quality control of it. And uh, working with the crew in that department was uh, pretty amazing. It's the first time I've been that deep into a transfer case, so. Pretty knowledgeable yeah. and very professional. Yeah, package. it's uh, like, uh, I talked about it when I was in there with Jeff over there, is it, it was very sanitary. It felt like I was in a, a kitchen, you know what I mean? With the same calendars and stuff like that. So, that, that, like I said, it made, made me feel good about that. He runs a tight ship, a very clean one at that. Yeah, very impressed. Just like I am in all the departments here, so. 
Uh, that's the powertrain, hows and whys. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it.